I'm doing a short demo here of Battlegrounds. It's a virtual tabletop for playing RPGs online. I'm focusing mainly on encounters and deployments in this demo. Um, but you can see Battlegrounds start to it with a nice grid in the background. A very neat little command um, window here to the left is fairly straightforward. So what I want to start off with is to get some tokens out there. So I double click on a grid square, place figure, um, there's a bunch of categories now where you can find tokens, but for me, I'm just going to choose some vampire ones because I play vampire a lot. I'm going to call this Bruya 1, so it gives you some options here for setting it. Uh, who the owner is, the character name, the base type, etc. Um, hide unit after deploying it, I like to have that. It makes, lets the GM put down the figure and it's hidden from the players by default. Save these settings as default? Sure. Now I actually want two Bruyas, so I'm going to hit Duplicate and Select. And now I have two. Uh, I, let's get a couple more out here. So, La Zambra. La Zambra, hide unit after deploying. That's good. The numbers that come up around the figure are just, uh, if you tap those, then it's for moving the figure. Place figure. Let's put out a Nosferatu. Nosferatu, hide unit. The one you copy, for some reason, never comes out. So you can either right-click and hit hide, or just tap H. place figure. So what we're doing is basically making um, an encounter group. Um, so I'm just making a group that the PCs might encounter typically. I'm going to put a couple Jimsy in this group. So Jimsy 1. Hide unit after deploying. And another Jimsy. I'll just do it this way rather than duplicating. Jim Z2 automatically came up, that's nice. Hide unit after deploying. I'm just going to select them all now. Um, so for all of them, I'm going to turn on the character name, which will just let me see on the map quickly. Bruya 1, Bruya 2, Lazamra, Nasrato, etc. And I'm going to add all of... Oh, I'm going to change the owner to everyone, so that anyone can see them and use them. And I am going to, by default, include them in the turn sequence, which is, in the left here, you'll see a turn sequencer. It's basically an initiative tracker. So I can double click this and change the initiative. And um, once we get into a combat, it's very useful. But for now, I just want uh, that to happen by default. So now I've got everything selected again. So what I'm going to hit is save deployment. So by default, it'll go into my deployment folder. So I'm going to just call this Anarch Group 1. I already have one of those, but that's okay. It'll overwrite it. And now I'm just going to delete all those off. I have to confirm for each figure. There might be a faster way. I'm not quite sure. So now, without actually changing the map, I can load a deployment. And I can have a bunch of these. So I say Anarch Group 1. And now I can put them on my map where I want. Lazambra, Jimsy. I might say, well, you know what? In this particular group, I only want one Jimsy, so I'm going to get rid of those. And then when I'm ready, the players will be around, and I can just unhide them all, and then all of a sudden the players will be able to see them. So that's encounter groups, or um, deployments, sorry. Let's look at encounters. Whereas deployments only save the pogs themselves, and in loading and saving an encounter, which you can see over here in the side menu, will actually save the map, plus the pogs, plus your fog of war settings and everything. So I'm going to change map here, and I'm going to load... It's actually a sci-fi map, but it's just for demonstration. So it should be fine. 
So any JPEG can be used as a map. So because this map already has a grid on it, I'm going to force gridless, so it'll turn off the grid. I'm going to turn off the snap to the grid and just hit OK. So now I can just use my mouse wheel to zoom out and my right mouse button to pan. Now, I don't want the players to see everything when they start off. I, let's say the players are going to start off in this room. And I want them to see the whole map. So, Fog of War. Fog of War hides... Uh, we'll go manual only. Dynamic can use light sources and the like, but I'm not going to bother. So I'll just use manual. And now under Reveal and Conceal... Well, I can... Oh, I have to hit Enable. And once you hit Enable, it, it hides everything. So I'm going to say, well, under Reveal, I'll just take a square and say the players can see that and that and that. And that's all they can see because they're just in that room. If I want to click here, I'll see as the players see it. So I might want to go just a little more just to get that door. So there and there. Perfect. So now I'm pretty happy with my Fog of War settings. That's how it'll start off. So I'll just hit close. And now I'll start placing some pogs. So I'll load my deployment. And our group one. Let's say there's two brewers waiting in this room here for the players. And a little further down, there's two Jimacy. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. The Lazambra and the Nosferatu. And you can see now, if I load up the turn sequencer, these guys are already all in here. Let's pop in a couple NPCs, uh, for the, a couple figures for the players. So I'll just use generic pogs. That'll do for, let's call this guy Gabriel. Uh, set owner to everyone. And now I'm realizing uh, I made a mistake with these guys. These are all set to owner everyone. I really don't want that. I want to change all those to GM ownership. because I don't want the players to have control over those pods. So, uh, this one I do want the players to have control of because it's going to be their their characters. So I'll just put out another guy. Generic 2, here we go. Uh, let's call this guy Blake, just for a name. Owner everyone. And these units won't be hidden because they're there for the players. And we'll just turn on the label, character name again. And I can also add these guys to the turn sequencer as well. So I've set up a map. It's taken me hardly any time. But this is how I want it. I'm going to run the game maybe in a few days' time, maybe in a week's time. This is one encounter. I want to save that as an encounter. So I save... And then it goes into my encounter folder here, and I'm just going to call this Anarch Group Encounter. Now, lastly, um, I also have, if I press under the B button here, I can export encounter assets. So what this will do, and this only works if you have a registered GM client, it won't work in the demo. Uh, basically, it explains it here in the text, but it'll export to one file the map and any pogs used and whatnot, so that when the and I can send that to the players before the game, just and tell them, hey, there's a map pack that I'm going to be using the next game. Um, toss it in your media asset folder and have it ready. And I can put a password in here, so that they can't even open those maps or anything before I tell them to. So I just hit export. It tells me it's going to be a minute, but it's quite quick. And now that encounter is completely loaded. And during the game, all I have to do is hit load encounter, select that, and boom.
there it is, ready to go. Well, I hope that helps a lot. Um, I'm hoping to do a few more of these videos. We'll see as time goes along. Thank you.